So far, I haven't found anyone to come up with a fourth. So then there's the question of uh, uh, wisdom. So the structure of the lady puzzle. Director's chair. <laughs> This I'm calling the introduction. Now, actually, curiously enough, there are three introductions. Sure. Uh, and where to make the division is going to be fun. Mm -hmm. So, I'm also going to ask you to. Uh, <coughs> Recognize a possible puzzle, skip it, and come back to it when it's appropriate. That's appropriate. I'm used to doing that. Therefore, it's a yeah. delayed puzzle. puzzle. <laughs> <laughs> All right, fair enough. So we need a couple of readers. All right, nothing new. God, yeah, the same old way. Old stuff. <laughs> Same old way of doing things. No interpretation. Yeah. <laughs> so we need a Theos, Theotetus, Socrates, Theodorus, and the introduced students. What do you say? We need some. Dead? How about one of them? Okay. Which one? Uh, um, First one on the list? Sure. Euclides? And uh, Sam, I'll play Sam. All right, that's two a down. Which one? Oh. Euclides. Huh? The Atita stock, which? Pick. The Atita. Sock. Sock. Theodorus. I'll do it. Theodorus, you're on. Okay. Come, boy, take, take the book and read. Um, page seven. Mm. Oh, from the beginning. Yeah. Okay. Uh, just, just in from the country, Terpsion, or 
Did you come some time ago? Quite a while ago. I was looking for you in the marketplace and wondering that I could not find you. Well, you see, I was not in the city. Where then? As I was going down to the harbor, I met Theotetus, being carried to Athens from the camp at Corinth. Alive or dead? Just barely alive, for he, would, he is suffering severely from wounds, and worse than that, he has been taken with the sickness that has broken out in the army. You mean the dysentery? Yes. What a man. He who you say is in danger. A noble man, Terpsion, and indeed, just now, I heard some people praising him highly for his conduct in the battle. That is not at all strange. It would have been much more remarkable if he had not so conducted himself. But why did he not stop here in Megara? He was in a hurry to get home, for I begged him for I begged and advised him to stop, but he would not. So I went along with him, and as I was coming back, I thought of Socrates and wondered at his prophetic gift, especially in what he said about him. For I think he met him a little before his own death, when Theotetus was a mere boy, and as a result of acquaintance and conversation with him, he greatly admired his qualities. When I went to Athens, he related to me the conversation he had had with him, which was well worth hearing, and he said he would surely become a notable man if he lived. And he was certain, and he was right, apparently. But what was the talk? Could you relate it? No, by, by Zeus, at least not offhand. But I made notes at the time, and as soon as I, I reached home, then afterwards, at my leisure, I recalled things. I wrote them down, and whenever I went to Athens, I used to ask Socrates about what I could not remember. And then I came here and made corrections, so that, so that I have pretty much the whole talk written down. That is true. I heard you say so before. I really, I've been waiting about here all along, intending to ask you to show it to me. What hinders us from reading it now? Certainly I need to rest, since I've come from the country. And I, and I myself went with Theotetus as far as Uranium, so I also should not be sorry to take a rest. Come, let us go, and while we are resting, the boy shall read to us. Very well. Here's the, here's the book, Terpsion. Now this is the way I wrote the conversation. I did not represent Socrates relating it to me as he did, but conversing with those with whom he told me he conversed. And he told me that they were ge geometricians, Theodorus and Theotetus. Now in order that the explanatory words between the speeches might not be annoying in the written account, such as, and I said, or he agreed, or he did not agree, in the case of interlocutor, I omitted all that sort of thing and represented Socrates himself as talking with them. That's quite fitting, you play it is. Come, come, boy, take the book and read. Okay. That's the first introduction. more for Serene and its affairs, Theodorus. I should ask you about the things there and about the people, whether any of the young men there are devoting themselves to geometry or any other form of philosophy. But as it is, since I care less for those people than for the people here, I am more eager to know which of our own young men are likely to gain reputation. These are the things I myself investigate so far as I can, and about which I question those others with whom I see that the young men like to associate. Now a great many of them come to you, and rightly, for you deserve it on account of your geometry, not to speak of other reasons. So if you have met with any young man who is worth mentioning, I should like to hear about him. 
truly Socrates, it is well worthwhile for me to talk and for you to hear about a splendid young fellow, one of your fellow citizens whom I have met. Now if he were here, handsome, um, now if he were handsome, I should be very afraid to speak, at least someone should think I was in love with him. But the fact is, now don't be angry with me, he is not handsome, but it's like you and his snub nose and protruding eyes. Only those features are less marked in him than in you. Uh, you see, I, I speak fearlessly. Uh, if you talk a little louder, we have some to turn and can't quite pin it down. <laughs> okay. Um, but I assure you that among all the young men I have ever met, and I have had to do with a great many, I never yet found one of such marvelously fine qualities. He is quick to learn, beyond almost anyone else, yet exceptionally gentle, and moreover brave beyond any other. I should not have supposed such a combination existed, and I do not see it elsewhere. On the contrary, those who, like him, have quick, sharp minds and good memories have usually also quick tempers. They dart off and are swept away like ships without a ballast. They are excitable rather than courageous. Those, on the other hand, who are steadier are somewhat dull when brought face to face with learning and are very forgetful. But this boy advances toward learning and investigation smoothly and surely and successfully with perfect gentleness like a stream of oil that flows without a sound, so that one marvels how he accomplishes all this at his age. I have heard the name, uh, but do not, do not remember. However, it does not matter. For the youth, for the youth is the middle one of those who are now coming toward us. He and those friends of his were anointing themselves in the outer course, and now they seem to have finished and to be coming here. See if you recognize him. Yes, I do. He is the son of Euphronius of Suninium, who is a man of just the sort you describe, and of good repute in other respects. Moreover, he left a very large property, but the youth's name I do not know. Theotetus is his name, Socrates, but I believe the property was squandered by trustees. Nevertheless, Socrates, he is remarkably liberal with his money, too. It is a noble man that you describe. Now, please tell him to come here and sit by us. I will. Theotetus, come here to Socrates. Yes, do so, Theotetus, that I, that I may look at myself and see what sort of face I have. But Theodora says it is like yours. Now, if we each had a liar, and he said, we had tuned them to the same key. Should we take his word for it without more ado, or should we inquire first whether he who said it was a musician? We should inquire. Then if we found that he was a musician, we should believe him, but if not, we should refuse to take his word? Yes. But now if we are concerned about the likeness of our faces, must we consider whether he who speaks is a painter or not? I think we must. Well, is Theodore a painter? Not so far as I know. Nor a geometrician either? Oh, yes, decidedly. And an astronomer and an ar arithmetician and a musician and a general and, and in general an educated man? I think so. Well, then, if he says, either in praise or blame, that we have some physical resemblance, it is not especially worthwhile to pay attention to him. Perhaps not. But what if he should praise the soul of one of us for virtue and wisdom? Is it not worthwhile for the one who hears to examine eagerly the one who is praised and for that one to exhibit his qualities with eagerness? Certainly, Socrates. Then, my dear Theotetus, this is just the time for you to exhibit your qualities and for me to examine them, for I assure you that Theodorus, though he has praised many foreigners and citizens to me, never praised anyone as... He praised you just now. Haha, <laughs> good idea, Socrates, but make sure that he was not jesting when he was speaking. That is not Theodorus's way. But do not seek to draw back from your agreement on the pretext that he is jesting, or he will be forced to testify under oath, for certainly no one will accuse him of perjury. 
come be courageous and hold to your agreement. Hold to the agreement. I suppose I must if you say so. Now tell me, I suppose you learned some ge geometry from Theodore? Yeah. And astronomy and harmony and arithmetic? I try hard to do so. And so do I, my boy, but from and so do I, my boy, from him and from any others who I think know anything about these things. But nevertheless, although in other respects I get on fairly well in them, yet I'm in doubt about one little matter, which should be investigated with your help and that of these others. Tell me, is not learning growing wiser about that which one learns? Of course. And the wise, I suppose, are wise by wisdom? Yes. And does this differ at all from knowledge? Does what differ? <coughs> wisdom. Or are not people wise in that with which they have knowledge? Of course. Then knowledge and wisdom are the same? Yes. Well, it is just that it is just this that I am in doubt about and cannot fully grasp by my own efforts. What knowledge really is. Can we tell that? What do you say? Who of us will speak first? And he who fails and whoever fails in turn shall go and sit down and be donkey, as the children say when they play ball. And whoever gets through without failing shall be our king and shall order us to answer any questions he pleases. Why are you silent? I hope, Theodorus, I'm not rude, through my love of discussion and my eagerness to make us converse and show ourselves friends and ready to talk to one another. That sort of thing would not be at all rude, Socrates. But tell one of the youths to answer your questions, for I am unused to such conversation, and, moreover, I am not of an age to accustom myself to it. But that would be fitting for these young men, and they would improve much more than I, for the fact is, youth admits of improvement in every way. Come, question Theotetus as you began to do, and do not let him off. Well, Theotetus, you hear that you hear what Theodora says, and I think you will not wish to disobey him. Nor is it right for a young person to disobey a wise man when his instruction is about such matters. Come, speak up well and nobly what you think knowledge is. Well, Socrates, I must, since you bid me. For if I make a mistake, you are sure to set me right. Certainly, if we can. Well, then... I can think of things one might learn from theater <coughs> or knowledge, geometry and all the things you spoke of just now, and also cobblery and other craftsmen's arts. Each and all of these are nothing else but knowledge. You are noblest and generous, my friend, for when you are asked for one thing, you give many, and a variety of things instead of a simple answer. What do you mean by that, Socrates? Nothing, perhaps. But I will tell you what I do, what I think I mean. When you say cavalry, do you speak of nothing else in the art of making shoes? You speak of nothing else in the art of making shoes, do you? Nothing else. And when you say carpentry, do you mean anything else in the art of making wooden furnishings? Nothing else by that either. Then in both cases, you define that to which each form of knowledge belongs. Yes. But the question, Theotetus, was not to what knowledge belongs, nor how many the forms of knowledge are. For we did not wish to number them, but to find out what knowledge itself really is. For is there nothing in what I say? Hmm. Nay, you were quite right. Take this example. If anyone should ask us about some common everyday thing, for instance, what clay is, and we should reply that it is the potter's clay and the oven maker's clay and the brick maker's clay, should we not be ridiculous? Perhaps. Yes, and in the first place we're assuming that the questioner can understand from our answer what clay is when we say clay, no matter whether we add the image makers or any other craftsmen's. Or does anyone, do you think, understand the name of anything when he does not know what the thing <coughs> is? Mm, by no means. Then he does not understand knowledge of shoes if he does not know knowledge. No. Then he who is ignorant of knowledge does not understand cobbler or any other art. That is true. 
then it is a ridiculous answer to the question, what is knowledge, when we give the name of some art. For we give in our answer something that knowledge belongs to, when that was not what we were asked. Hmm. So it seems. Secondly, when we might have given a short everyday answer, we go into an interminable distance round. For instance, in the question about clay, the everyday simple thing would be to say, clay is earth mixed with moisture, without regard to whose clay it is. It seems easy just now, Socrates, as you put it. But you are probably asking the kind of thing that came up among us lately when your namesake Socrates here and I were talking together. What kind of thing was that, Theodorus? Well, Theodorus here was drawing some figures for us in illustration of roots, showing that squares containing three square feet and five square feet are not commensurable in length with the unit of the foot. And so, selecting each one in its turn up to the square containing 17 square feet. And that, he stopped. And at that, he stopped. Now, it occurred to us, since the number of roots appeared to be infinite, to try to collect them under one name, by which we could henceforth call all the roots. When did you find such a name? I think we did. But see if you agree. Well, we divided all number into two classes. The one, the numbers which can be formed by multiplying equal factors. We represented by the shape of the square and called square or equilateral numbers. Well done. The numbers between these, such as three and five, and all numbers which cannot be formed by multiplying equal factors but only by multiplying a greater by a less, or a less by a greater, and are therefore always contained in, in, in unequal sides, we represent it by the shape of the oblong rectangle, and called oblong numbers. Very good. And what next? Well, all the lines which form the four sides of equilateral, or square numbers, we called lengths. And those which form the oblong numbers, we called thirds because they are not commensurable with the others in length, but only in the areas of the planes which they have the power to form. And similarly in the case of solids. Most excellent, my boys. I think Theodorus will not be found liable to any to an action for false witness. But really, Socrates, I cannot answer that question of yours about knowledge, as we answered the question about length and square roots. And yet you seem to me to want something of that kind. So Theodorus appears to be a false witness after all. <laughs> Nonsense. <coughs> if you were praising your running and said you and sa if you were praising your running and said he had never met any young man who was so good a runner, and then you were beaten in a race by a full-grown man who held the record, do you think his praise would be any less truthful? Why, no. And do you think that the discovery of knowledge, as I was just now saying, is a small matter, and not a task for the very ablest man? Mm -hmm. yeah. By these, <coughs> I think it's the task for the very ablest. Then you must have confidence in yourself and believe that Theodorus is right. You try earnestly in every way to gain an understanding of the nature of knowledge as well as of other things. Oh, if it is a question of earnest, Socrates, the truth will come to light. Well then, for you pointed out the way admirably just now, take your answer about the roots as a model. And just as you embrace them all in one class, though they were many, try to designate the many forms of knowledge by one definition. But I assure you, Socrates, I have often tried to work that out when I heard reports of questions that you asked. But I can neither persuade myself that I have any satisfactory answer, nor can I find anyone else who gives the kind of answer you insist upon. And yet, on the other hand, I cannot get rid of a feeling of concern about the matter. Yes, you are suffering the pains of labor, Theotetus, because you are not empty, but pregnant.
Okay, now, from this point, we read that section of the seminar. Agree? All right. So just for the moment, I'd like to just conclude that section. Skip it. All right? It's a long section. And go to the end of it at 151B, page 39. <coughs> last two sentences. I have it on page 39. And so, Theotetus, begin again and try to tell us what knowledge is. Never say that you are unable to do so. If God wills it and gives you courage, you will be able. <coughs> Theotetus, well then, Socrates, since you are so urgent, it would be disgraceful for anyone not to exert himself in every way to say what he can. I think, then, that he who knows anything perceives that which he knows. And, as it appears at present, knowledge is nothing else than perception. All right, that's 151E. The dialogue now begins here. Mm -hmm. Right? Oh, by the way, guess <laughs> I made a mistake. <laughs> you put a line in there with no number on it. Yeah. What's that line? Yeah. So, what's the problem Socrates is posing for Theotetus? Uh -huh. <laughs> huh? What's the problem? Well, it goes back to that question about whether knowledge and wisdom are the same. And that's where? Well, before they get into... Oh boy. Alright. Let's take a good look at that. Alright, let's go back over. <coughs> um I'd rather have a piece of paper. I noticed a nice likeness. Corn fruit? Me, yeah, it's cut a lot of x out passages. Oh, so why don't we just take a look there for a page? Page 17. Page 19? Yeah, just the bottom of 17. Oh, okay. Now tell me, I suppose you learned some geometry from Theodorus? Yes. And astronomy and harmony and arithmetic? I try hard to do so. And so do I, my boy. From him and from any others who I think know anything about these things. But nevertheless, although in other respects I get on fairly well in them, Yet I am in doubt about one little matter, which should be investigated with your help and that of these others. Tell me, is not learning growing wiser about that which one learns? Of course. And the wise, I suppose, are wise by wisdom, you know. And does this differ at all from knowledge? Does what differ? Let's be confused about that. What's the confuser? He says, does what differ? What, what is he thinking of? I was wondering. Well, does knowledge differ from this one? Yeah. Huh? And what was? <laughs> they prove the same thing. wouldn't need two words. Boy. Yeah, I know. But in what way do they differ was the question. That's a good question. Oh. <laughs> That's why he says. That's what Theotia said. Does what differ? Yeah. <laughs> If you have knowledge of something, does that necessarily make you wise? That's the other side of it, isn't it? Mm -hmm. But the only thing is, he sets him up with that sentence. Yeah. Tell me, is not learning growing wiser about that which one learns? Mm -hmm. 
Could very well be. Could very well be. All right, let me go next up. Right? Does what differ? Wisdom. Or are not people wise in that of which they have knowledge? Of course. Then knowledge and wisdom are the same thing. Yes. Well, it is just this that I am in doubt about and cannot fully grasp by my own efforts. What knowledge really is. Can, can we tell that? Uh, well, what do you say? Who of us will speak first? Okay. Can we tell that? What do you say? Which of us will speak first? That, this, what does that go back to? What knowledge really is? Who will speak first? And he who fails, and whoever fails in turn, shall go and sit down and be a donkey, as the children say when they play ball. And whoever gets through without failing shall be our king and shall order us to answer any questions he pleases. Isn't that a great game? <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that a great game? Right? Isn't that a fun evening? You want to try that one? Yeah. Why are you silent? <laughs> I hope, Theodorus, I am not rude through my love of discussion and my eagerness to make us converse and show ourselves friends and ready to talk to one another. <laughs> I'm so afraid of being a donkey. Right now, what, what's his problem? What's Socrates' problem? It's just this that I am in doubt about. I cannot back. fully grasp on my own efforts. That goes back. What knowledge really is. Like, so there are two things, right? There's, there's, there's two things. One by his own efforts, and the other is what knowledge really is. Well, I think that what knowledge really is, you know, or unless you want to say different. Wisdom and knowledge, and the, the second is how do you grasp it? Right. That knowledge and wisdom are the same thing. Alright? Same thing. It's just this I'm in doubt about. Well, it's just this that I am in doubt about. I cannot fully grasp on my own efforts what knowledge really is. You're not asking if it's the same thing. Really is. Asking what knowledge is. Yeah. But is that, is that what was just said? No. Or and the preceding, that knowledge and wisdom are the same thing. Right. That was agreed. Yes. Well, it's just this that I am in doubt about. Right. So what's he in doubt about? That they are the same thing. Right? Mm -hmm. Where is this confusion? Where is this doubt? Ha, it's doubt? with knowledge, not wisdom. <laughs> figure out what knowledge is. He didn't say he didn't know what wisdom is. That's right. right. That's right. He's, not also, he's also saying he doesn't know whether they're the same or not. That's not a question for him. No, he didn't say that. That's not his question at all. No, if he knows one and not the other, right? If you know one and not the other, then you wouldn't be in doubt about whether they were the same. Well, you could be, couldn't you? If you didn't know what the other was. No, but... Well, right now he's only asking what is known. You'll look at problem later on. <laughs> but whether well, you can deal with that problem, something something with Bill's Bill's mm -hmm. speaking about. But you can know so one thing about another one. This is what I'm in doubt about. Right? These two things are said to be the same thing. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm in doubt about. Yeah. Well, what are the ways in which he could proceed just formally with that kind of problem? Quicker. Just jump. A in. equals B. Mm -hmm. I'm in doubt about that. I'm in doubt about that. How could we proceed? Forget that. How could we proceed? We can find a third something at three. They're both equal to, all right? Okay. All right. I was saying that 
one possible way to proceed uh, would be to say, now look here, and then uh, give some argument, bang, 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 to show that knowledge and wisdom are not the same. Well, how would you do that? You no, know, like in a debate. Good. How, how could one proceed? Huh? As a strategy, how could one do that? What uh, do you have to do? If something could be proven true of wisdom, but not true of knowledge. Uh, so, yeah, okay. You would be showing a difference. If A differs from B, mm -hmm. all right, what would you have to do? Yes, show the distinction, show the difference. Ah, to show their difference. Oh. Well, then you'd have to know. Know what each one was. Yeah. Each one was. Right. right. To be able to no. say that. Yeah. No. Say, is it possible, is it possible, is it possible you could know one but not the other? Sure. Yeah. Or be uncertain about one and not the other? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sure. Mm -hmm. Well then. then. You wouldn't be able to be confused about two. What? If you didn't know one, you wouldn't be confused about the quality. Yeah. You wouldn't have confusion unless you had a. Come on. Is it possible to right, is it possible to know something about one but not about the other? Sure. Yes. Yeah. <coughs> is sure. it well, is it possible to know one and be unsure of the other? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. Sure. All right. So look here. Then it's possible to know one and be unsure of the other. So he's waited till the end of his life to investigate knowledge. Yep. Socrates has waited till the end of his life to investigate knowledge. To investigate the analogy? Yeah, knowledge. knowledge. Or unless he's done Is it all necessary that he knows something about one for him to have a doubt that they are the same? I mean, isn't that also true? Because if he didn't know anything about either, then mm, we have no puzzle. question. No puzzle. No, no, no puzzle. Right. He must if have. If he knew both, he wouldn't have a puzzle. He right. must have opinions about knowledge then. Also, he has to know one and not know the other. If he knows something about one, then he's going to know something about the other. Look here. If he knows something, and let's leave that as wide as you want. All right. If he knows something about B and and therefore because of that is unsure about attributing all of that to A or saying that about A could he not then be puzzled? Yeah. Because it would seem to function the same in some respects. Knowledge would seem to function the same in some respects, but if he knows wisdom, he would he would have uh, some doubt as to whether it had those kind of limitations or those extremes as to wisdom. Okay. That it, then we are saying, are we not, that it's quite legitimate to say that he may know this. Good evidence, perhaps, that he knows this. But there's something about this that puzzles him. Is that right, Paul? Uh, have complete wisdom and be puzzled about something about knowledge? Yeah. Then the wisdom is not complete. No, it just means in the category of wisdom you don't need knowledge. Mm. Knowledge is irrelevant to wisdom. Knowledge is irrelevant yeah. to wisdom. That's a heresy. <laughs> what? Isn't that a heresy? No. That's what we're taught yes. now. I mean, yeah. I think, aren't we no, taught this day and time? No, it's a heresy, isn't it? <clears throat> Is that a heresy? You agree with them, do you? Oh. Uh, I'm not sure I know what he said. Oh, okay. Well, it's, isn't no, it, it is isn't in this day and time. We're taught that knowledge okay. and wisdom are synonymous. That's why we need to know. We led the belief Today's that world. Knowledge, yeah, but, yeah, but aren't we back to the dart throwers? Mm -hmm. Would you what? take an enlightened man to a dart throwing contest, or would you take an expert in dart throwing? 
or is a person who is enlightened <coughs> also able to throw darts? <laughs> but would he throw it as well as an expert dart player? Yeah. If he were enlightened in dart throwing, then you would throw expect that if a man were enlightened, that would be the kind of man you'd want to bring along if you were going to look for a good deal in horses. I would say enlightenment always would help if it's total. Oh. Notice how you moved away from that. I'll have a check. Good point. Okay. If you knew a man was enlightened, would you say, there's the kind of man I want to take because I want to buy some rare stamps? What do you mean by enlightened? Well, you <laughs> introduced it. I don't have oh, it to buy it. You introduced all, it. Okay, all knowing, all wise. Well, then would you say, of course I'd bring him to buy rare stamps because he would be able to tell the value of it, yes. the worth of it, mm -mm. and everything else about it, wouldn't he? Even though he hadn't studied it before? Well, did, did we... He knows all about these things? No. <laughs> he hasn't studied them. <laughs> if he knows every just, just a job of light and don't. No, no. Come on, just, just, just right. stay with it. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If he knew about stamps, would it be because he was enlightened or because he had gained knowledge of stamps that he becomes an expert and gives good advice on the basis of information on stamps? Which would you say? Uh, I think I'm lacking in the definition of enlightenment. <laughs> Uh, okay. Wow. If it <laughs> if he's totally enlightened, he he, would you not agree stage. if two men were competing for a job in a pharmacy? Yes. A man should choose the one who's enlightened, not the man who has knowledge of pharmacy. <clears throat> Unless they're the same. Yeah. That's exactly right. So then we have the simplest way of determining who's wise and who's not. If a man knows how to do the pharmacy trip mixing all the more complex things in the various ways they do it, but has never gone to school, we know he's going to be totally wise. In the craft, does it, how about an understanding of the therapeutics? All aspects of pharmacy <coughs> would not follow. Therefore, a man would be foolish to <laughs> hire a pharmacist for that occupation when he could hire a wise man. Of course, if the, wi if the person were what do you mean wise if? in all fields. What do you mean if? Wouldn't wisdom can be conferred then? All knowledge and all knowledge would include pharmacy? Sure. Right. Therefore, the wise are the best pharmacists. <laughs> yes, and the best everything else. And mechanics, and everything. horsemen, right. and everything right. else. Yeah. Because the sum total of all knowledge for you is wisdom, doesn't it? What? The sum, the sum of all knowledge equals wisdom. Is that right? This is the well, this is what I'm trying to find out. No, no, this is where our, our reasoning leads us, doesn't it? Yeah. Just now? Just now. This is where the reasoning leads That's just the way we went in the side. The Buddha, don't back up the issues. Just put your well, would you know things about things that were not even known yet? All knowledge. Some total of all knowledge. Some total. In other words, the Buddha could have flown an airplane, right? Oh, yeah. See, and that's the, the very best throwing thing. And designed a computer. Right? right? Yes, all yes. According to the reasoning we're going through. Yeah. 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 Well, could he? Yeah. Right. Yeah. I mean, right. the Buddha never seen a 747. He's going to get in and fly. Easy. Well, he he might might be well I tell you what. You go first, and I'll watch. <laughs> yes. If wisdom equals this, that would follow. That would follow. Because he may be able to fly. I can't. Right? So look here. That would have to follow if this, if this definition is sound. By the way, would there be anything particular to him about wisdom, different from knowing all the arts? Like, look here, would a pharmacist, would it necessarily be true that all pharmacists are wise? Oh, then there's something in addition the wise man brings besides his knowledge of pharmacy, which he never learned. Yeah. Right. What's that in addition? The knowledge of all the other things? Right. But nothing beyond the knowledge of all other things does he bring. Um, Therefore, we can do away with the word well, wisdom and say, right, the <coughs> art of all arts 
huh? or the knowledge of all Knowledge. knowledges. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. And then we don't need the word wisdom. The master of all the arts. Right? Could be a chief, could he not? Could he not be a chief? Not, not Why not? not? Not a true master. Why? True master, true master, don't cheat. <laughs> Okay. I want you to hold to that position for a few minutes, all right? Therefore, Socrates should not have this worry. Should it? I mean, how can it be possible? How can he have a doubt about this? If knowledge, if knowledge is the same as wisdom. No. Uh, only when it, that there's two different names. Yeah. Right. 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 So. <laughs> In other words, you have exactly the problem with Theotetus. Yeah. You're saying you're wrong with what Theotetus is saying. That's right. Call? I thought they were the same. Yeah. That's what they what do you mean? <laughs> yeah, how can they differ? What does what differ? Because yeah. obviously they're not any different. Boys and girls are the same. Agreed? Uh, so now Socrates comes and pulls back and he says, gee, that's really curious. I really have a doubt about this matter. Uh -huh. Does he say, I, I'm not certain about what wisdom is. He says, "I what is not." I mean, as far as I know, he doesn't say that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he explores this side. Mm. Mm. That's the second part. That's the third part. That's where the problem emerges. One forty-five e. The knowledge and wisdom are the same thing, yes. Well, it's just this that I am in doubt about and cannot fully grasp by my own efforts what knowledge really is. This is what I'm in doubt about. That's what I'm in doubt about. What? What knowledge really is. That's what he's in doubt about. Look here. What knowledge is? That's what I'm in doubt about. Talk to me about this. He doesn't take the other ones. And so this is going to be a very strange dialogue, is it not? So he deals only with what knowledge is. Until we get to the interlude, and then he picks up wisdom. And he calls it a digression. Digression? Oh. Clever. All right. But it seems as though that here's someone who knows the greater but doesn't know the lesser. I mean, if you want to, I would like to put in a hierarchy. I'd like to say wisdom is greater than knowledge. Yeah. I'd like to say that. Okay. And yeah. if that's the case, he knows the greater but not the lesser. That seems strange. Yes. Except he's well, dealing with the lesser first. Yeah. Okay. Next. All right. There's the mathematical exploration. That's M. Then there's the midwifery exploration. Now, this mathematical demonstration or discussion is the case of the delayed puzzle. There's a puzzle there. The, the mathematical or no. the midwifery? No, no. <coughs> Just the mathematical. And that's going to furnish the structure for the dialogue. As an example, right? Well, there's a puzzle in the mathematical. Mm -hmm. I didn't see it. The absurd. Hmm? The absurd. <laughs> absurd. Absurd. 
Yeah, it's twenty seven. He goes through that. Yeah, it's this. All right, page twenty five. There's a whole discussion that precedes this. Which uh, Barbara's going to help us with on the word understanding knowledge on page 23, which repeats itself through here. All right, get there in a moment. Second line, I'll get both parts. Then it is a ridiculous answer to the question what is knowledge? When we give the name of some art, or we give in our answer something that knowledge belongs to, and that was not what we were asked, so it seems. Secondly, when we might have given a short everyday answer, we go on an interminable distance round. For instance, in the question about clay, the everyday simple thing would be to say, Clay is earth mixed with moisture, without regard to those to whose clay it is. It is. It seems easy just now, Socrates, as you put it, but you're probably asking the kind of thing that came up among us lately when your name said Socrates here and I were talking together. What kind of thing was that, Theotis? And then he gives the mathematical exploration. Mm -hmm. But you are probably asking the kind of thing that came up among us lately. But you are probably asking the kind of thing that came up among us lately. Probably. So what does he see? He sees that this mathematical exploration is similar to, right, is similar to the question about <coughs> what is not. Yeah. Or the, is, it, is, the is it the comparison of wisdom play. to knowledge? Would you say well, in, in He drops. He never, mean, mentions, he never mentions wisdom again until he gets in the digression. Mm -hmm. Up to this point, which is what Barbara's going to work on on page 23, up to this point there's been a whole exploration of the one word of knowledge. Page 27. Mm -hmm. But really, Socrates, I cannot answer that question of yours about knowledge as we answer the question about length and square roots. And you seem to me to want something of that kind. All right, so let me ask you this. As Theotius is reflecting on his experience with Theodorus, he came to a discovery in mathematics, in geometry and arithmetic. Mm -hmm. He says, you know what? This question you have is like, it's probably like this exploration we went through. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, then what do we have? What's that for? Oh, the accidental analogy. No, it's not an accidental analogy. He thinks it's analogous, yeah. mm -hmm. yeah. right, or similar. Mm -hmm. The strict similar, mathematical similar. Is that right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Say, <laughs> I don't want to give away the, the delayed puzzle, but what if the problem he has with knowledge is the same problem he has with mathematics? Now, don't, don't even concern yourself with that, because we have to keep the puzzle and we have to delay it. Mm -hmm. Never that question. Thanks. Right? <laughs> What problem with mathematics? That's why I didn't want to bring it up. Well, if it's, say, would you not agree from what we know later? The answer is, is aware of the kinds of questions that Socrates asks. That's right. Yeah. So why did he give the answer? I've walked in. He's got a whole backlog, doesn't he? Mm -hmm. There's a whole backlog. Right. About this, mm -hmm. right? Especially when he hears people asking questions. Probably hear Socrates 
when he hears reports about the kinds of questions the Socrates asks, especially dealing with his problem. He's, he's always got a lot of background for this. He says, you know what, I think it's like this. So what is he doing there for? He's structuring, he's structuring, he's expecting. He's showing from his own experience. Right. That's right. He thinks he may be able to answer this question on the model of mathematics, especially his mathematical discovery. Right, aren't you? That's what you're saying. So he has a belief in this head, doesn't he? <laughs> yeah. And he's being guided by that. Was your question about understanding knowledge? Yes. Okay, that is. Page 23, everyone, it's not. What do you think of this? Yes, it's very strange. Sunni Yasin? Sunni Yasin, yeah. Yeah. Sunni Yasin is in both the paragraph at 147b, the line beneath it in the Greek, and three lines down right. in his next question. Right. And it comes from Sun Hiemi. And Hiemi means to set in motion. Sun means together. So you have something set in motion together. In, in the compound sense, the first meaning is to bring or set together, like in the combatant sense. And the second major category is to perceive metaphorically which is very peculiar. And the third, the category under that, they get to understand, as in understa understanding one another's language, but it's not anywhere near. Um, Do it again, please. Okay, well, what's curious, okay. Stone is together, Stone together. together. motion together, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, set in motion together, or be in motion together. Right, mm -hmm. just set in motion together. And they give us the first major, that's the, what you call the radical meaning, the meaning of both of the, the, the root parts. The first major category of meaning is to bring or set together in the hostile sense. You have to set, at things, set things at each other. Oh, I see. In competition. Oh, right. at, odds. At, at odds, yeah. Um, and the second major category of meaning is, they call it metaphoric, to perceive or to hear. Like, comp you know, when someone says, you that's so weird. He's asking, do you perceive that he does not perceive knowledge of shoes? He doesn't. Yeah, I don't think you should use that one. Or he would be at, at he would be at odds with knowledge of shoes if he did not know knowledge of shoes, or against the knowledge of shoes. Then he does not. The second one is no knowledge, though, isn't it? Eidos. Eidos. And oiden. But the first one, kind of. Sunniation. The sun is a, is, is a positive sense of together. Mm -hmm. hmm? In the middle, it can have the meaning of to come to an agreement, to come together. Mm -hmm. The problem is, yeah, that might make sense. But it's not in the middle, that's the problem. Yeah, did you look this up and come to some way of, of working with it? Me? Yeah. I just do it stunk. Uh, yeah, stunk. Mm -hmm. So, uh, is what you're saying oh, wait, that we acknowledge you two, three times here? Once we're here, we did about four times. Oh, you're looking at yeah. you and thinking that. Sorry, I'm sorry. There's Sunni and I, just above that. Did you notice that part? No. Okay, sure. Okay. 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 But that's when he does understand, understand, understand the place. Right. Uh -huh. The word understand is not there. Okay. We're trying to figure out what, what is there. What is there? Okay. Right. Do you have a Greek on that side, too? Uh huh. Mm -hmm. Let me explain it. That's 
written question. The large lexicon gives, under the second category of perceiving or hearing, as meaning in Homer, it also gives to be aware of, to take notice of, to observe, which backs it away a little bit. doesn't make any use of the radical in the Bible. Could how about cognizant? That, that cognizant, there's a word for it. Or does anyone do you think? Mm. Or is anyone cognizant of the name of the name? Con. Because that's what I know. Cognizant. That he is not aware, that he's not aware of the knowledge of shoes if he doesn't know knowledge. Yeah. He might be aware of the shoes, but he may not be aware of the knowledge of the right. shoes. If he doesn't know the knowledge of yeah. How about if it's, if it's dealing with perception, that you can, do you, by looking, perceiving shoes, can you gain knowledge? Yeah, but you can perceive knowledge. I think that, but what does that do to her questions? Oh, it's kind of rude, really. I'm sorry. No, no keep yours. Don't give yours up. But. I don't know. I didn't listen well enough to her before saying what. Uh, mm. Well, if you perceive shoes, uh, is it through perception you gain knowledge of shoes? I was just taking the two definitions in the few minutes. Could it be then then he is not aware of knowledge? So you know that would take a different case. That's pretty good. Of shoes if he doesn't know knowledge. Hmm. Then he who is ignorant of knowledge does not cannot be aware. of Kabbalah or any other art. Cornford has, then if he has no idea of knowledge, knowledge about shoes conveys nothing to him. It drops the whole problem. Well, he, he goes with the root meaning of the sun he How do you see that? Huh? How do you see that? It conveys to him. He's not able to go along with well, that's the same as aware. Though, he's dropping it? out. That's in the, isn't that in the second section of mm -hmm. Where mm -hmm. he does not understand knowledge of shoes if he does not know knowledge. Isn't he doing conveying knowledge does not convey anything to him? Isn't that representing no knowledge? Uh, uh, no, I think uh, or is it back in if he has no idea of knowledge. Yeah, read it again. Read it again. Then if he has no idea of knowledge, he turns it around. That's the Edo. Uh, if he has no idea of knowledge, knowledge about shoes conveys nothing to him. And he has knowledge about shoes in quote as a title of a kind of knowledge uh, or a topic. And conveys nothing to him is, I think the word conveys, he's using to translate the Sunni Asin, and picking up the, the root meeting, didn't you say about going together, coming together? Set, set together, uh, coming together in the middle. Mm -hmm. that, I mean, that looks way, like that. The way Fowler should have done this, <clears throat> make it a little clearer, is it, is it, but it is not understand knowledge of Jesus. He put, should have put knowledge of Jesus in quotation marks if somebody was saying that, you know. Help me a little bit. You just don't understand when somebody's saying knowledge of shoes. Well, you know, mm -hmm. one thing is that when, for example, when Socrates says he's in doubt, he describes himself as being a for meaning without a pathway, without a passage mm -hmm. to under that knowledge is the same as wisdom, and that's the common word for being uh, in doubt or um, and it seems like this word of coming together or to bring or sit together it's if you translate it he hasn't 
Does anyone, do you think, has anyone been brought together? If he has not been brought together with, you know, they can't do that. There's, there's the idea of conveyance there, then. There's an idea of link. So if he doesn't have He hasn't been said to have knowledge of shoes if he doesn't know knowledge. He hasn't encountered knowledge of shoes if he doesn't know knowledge. He ha- you do need to Mm-hmm. That makes sense. That's mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Yeah. It doesn't count. Still in the position, I'm Mm-hmm. Uh, oh, you have this. So put it in the sentence, bro. Okay. Um, then. Then he does. Then um, he has not encountered the knowledge of the shoes. Has not. Has not encountered knowledge of shoes if he doesn't know what knowledge is. He hasn't. Uh, then he doesn't. Then he, he doesn't enc- encounter knowledge of shoes if he doesn't know knowledge. Right. Mm-hmm. Right. Okay. Hmm. So he, knowing knowing. he who is ignorant of knowledge does not encounter cobbledry or any other no- or any other art, for that presupposes a knowledge. Mm-hmm. Okay. Pretty sophisticated. Mm-hmm. Wow. So we should use in place of understanding. Yeah. 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 I was just thinking that it may be easier to use that one since it's in the positive sense. Okay. That paragraph. Okay, next problem. All right? If we go into this section on midwife, then. There is an analogy, is there not? An extended analogy. Midwife, huh? Extended analogy. Spell it out. Spell it out. Get all the references. So that we can then see in the analogy as the midwife is uh, or practices on pregnant women. So the philosophical midwife practices delivering ideas among men. Pull out all of the things on the one side, right? That's on the side of philosophical midwife birth. All of the things that he says is like, right? So that then we can see whether or not, here's our test now. Right. Can we find, can we find examples in the dialogue itself, in the theatetics, for each of those elements? In other words, can we just cut up the dialogue, right? cut, get a Xerox copy of the dialogue, cut it all up so that we can put in each each box the parts that appropriately fall into that section where he describes philosophical midwifery. Right? Yeah, because if he doesn't, then he's gonna—he's not doing midwifery if he doesn't follow all those points. Right? So if we have all of the points, the have all as the points. we, what's it? Well, the patient doesn't have all the problems that a midwife would need to. Uh, That's right. Good point. Right. Yeah, so we want to get all of them. Complications. All right. All the things he says that you can find on the other side, and we're going to look for them in the dialogue. Hmm. 
Good. 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 Stage matching one, cutting the umbilical cord. Yeah. I never saw what? anything. I never saw anything that I. I looked looked for that. I, I kept an eye out for that. I never saw anything that I thought was. Well, therefore, say, but is there is there a parallel on this side? Does Socrates think there's a parallel on this yeah. side? Yeah. Well, yeah. Everything everything applies. Except no, it doesn't. No, no, no. No, it doesn't. It's not the same. It's analogous. It's analogous. It's not exactly the same. Mm -hmm. What does it say exactly? Shoot, I forget. Well, we'll have to click, won't we? Yeah. All right, washing the sheets, you know, where is that in the philosophical midwife? So should be a incantation. Washing up the sheets after the delivery. No, no, it's got to be that dialogue. Come on. Well, where's cutting the umbilical cord? Yeah, that's a good question. But washing the sheets, nah. Okay. Oh, all right. Be able to judge who's pregnant or not. Right. And therefore, you're also going to look for differences on it. So that's our task. Right? That's our task. Right? All in the first, <coughs> just the introduction. Now, if you noticed, <laughs> how foolish. One thing we can say, that first part doesn't relate to anything. We can cut it off. So right. we can that's why you have a, di a dotted line there. Cut on that in mind. <laughs> we do not agree. We can do that after we get through the end of it. Oh. Yes. Right. Yeah, we've always had trouble with the introduction until we got to the end. Yeah. <laughs> it has an interesting job. It's kind of like someone giving you the answer, but you don't know the question, so you don't know it's an answer. Mm -hmm. okay. To which question is this an answer? Yeah. That's a, a delayed puzzle number two, then. But I'm not that I just, that's easy. What? Uh, this last part, that's easy. This first part, you mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah? Wait a minute, you said all that is true of your art and you like this, all that's true of mine. Come on, give us some letters and make a practice on the end of that one. And your soul's in there and not the rest. It's not quite loud enough to hear. <coughs> Theatetus that apparently appears or looks like Socrates. And in this dialogue, they also have a namesake of Socrates. Uh, what's that about? Yeah, we're into So I thought, um, well, the dialogue deals with perception. And, the other, and there's a dialogue just prior to that about dealing with names, and whether that, and whether that is knowledge. Well, knowing the name of something, know whether you know the thing itself. And since they're namesakes and appear to be like Socrates, the question would be whether that would be Socrates or what is Socrates in himself? Uh, the last part. What is Socrates in himself? I would explain with the images. Well, I think you're playing some good, some good along here, it seems to me. And that's as far as I pushed it. But that it, it well, there was a one section on 40, 148E where Theotetus presents his 
puzzle or his how he relates to the problem of knowledge or, or the question that he hears Socrates ask. And it, as I was reading it, I knew I remembered that earlier on Socrates gave us a similar way of handling problems but not completely so when he talked about um, harmony and arithmetic. That is that he does also, for him and from other, he also seeks out from him and from any others who I think oh yeah? know anything about mm-hmm. these things. And it appears that that's what Theotetus had done with that question, at least in some degree. So there seemed to be somewhat of a likeness between the two, but not completely. <coughs> Might be something to play with. So there appears to be maybe some at least on some level. That's what I was thinking of seeing. If somebody else can push it further. Oh, I saw it more similar. Than what she wanted to put it in. I don't know where else to take it from. Well, it didn't have very much the model copy image. Didn't it yeah. have much the model copy image? So if you took that idea of model copy, how would you apply it there? Well, that Socrates is the model, and that if Theotetus and the namesake are namesakes and, pers- and are appeared like Socrates, then they're the copy in appearance. Mm-hmm. And in namesake, mm-hmm. but not Socrates, not the model itself. I mean, that's, that's and where would you go there? Then he said what about virtue? But that's the way I would say. Okay, uh, so I understand you correctly. You're making these, and I don't know what else to do with them. Is that correct? Yeah. Hi. Who's the person who makes uh, and gives gives that those kinds of similarities some significance? Socrates or Theodorus? Theodorus oh. gives the image. Says that there's some. Yeah, he puts a bit. Does Socrates regard that similarity as significant? What kind of similarity does he is he looking for in that sort of story? Oh, whether he's, uh, uh, it's not in terms of appearance. I can't remember exactly. Virtue. But whether, in fact, it's in the soul. Yeah, the soul. Or states of mind. Yeah. Oh, so what are you doing then? You don't know how much further to push something that Theodorus found interesting. Is that correct? So even though he knew that similarity, was there something he didn't know? Theodorus. Was there something Theodorus didn't know, even though he knew all about the similarity between Socrates and Cleotes? He didn't know the virtues. Uh, no? I, I, I don't know. Huh? I, I have to think of I don't know. I'm going to go back. What was the question? What was the thing that Socrates was interested in? Besides the parents? He wasn't interested in the parents? <coughs> so, what does Socrates want to know about? What does Socrates want to know about this similar? What do you want to know? First thing, what do you want to know? That's good news. But which of the citizens is his father? I have heard the name but do not remember it. It doesn't matter. Yeah. It doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> right. he misses out on the, what? Misses out on that early step. He doesn't go even as far as knowing the name of the father. Right. But he is quite taken up by the appearance. By the appearance. Socrates sees him and immediately says, Oh yes, I do. I know him. He's the son of Euphronius. Yeah. Right. And then he knows about the man, doesn't he? He knows about his father. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 
He is, like he is a man of just the sort you described, the Atidas to be. Therefore, what does he know about? He knows about the qualities that men have. Mm -hmm. He can spot their sons. Mm -hmm. right? And he can quickly assess the, the similar qualities passing from father to son. That's a midwife. That's one of the marks mm -hmm. of the midwife. Mm -hmm. So he's functioning right there as a midwife. Oh, yeah, I understand. Yeah, I know who that is. But don't know his name, by the way. I've never seen him before. But that couple of those qualities, I know his father. Your friends. Which uh, is? Yeah, yeah, same qualities as you described. Because he knew the father. Yeah. Is there any would pass on a problem in the same? Yeah. He's got <laughs> two fathers. Right, philosophical father, Theodorus. And Theodorus, it doesn't matter who the father is. It doesn't matter. Even though he knows he came from a family that was quite wealthy, he doesn't bother mm -hmm. to find out. Isn't it that he doesn't remember? Yeah, it doesn't remember. <coughs> but he says, but it doesn't matter. Theodorus. But he knows the money to get it. Yeah. He squandered it, he knows that. Yeah. But he's still he generous. <laughs> yeah. <coughs> yeah. Theodorus is the kind of guy that stops after demonstrating only a little bit. All right, all right. So let me go back to Jane, all right? Mm -hmm. So how could you push it? See, we're pushing. Mm -hmm. right. How do you push it, then? You found something interesting. Mm -hmm. right. Physical parents. <coughs> what did I do? Yeah. What, what role, it? see, what role did that play, and who's playing it? Mm -hmm. uh, so, hey, that's Theodorus is making those comments. Right? Mm -hmm. Didn't go any, any further with Theodorus, did it? No, he didn't. Right. But Socrates found a similarity in states of mind. At least that's what was being, being asserted. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, he said, hey, you shouldn't pay much attention to what Theodore says because he's not an artist. And therefore, why should we believe that his judgment is anything particular in his mind? Mm -hmm. I just dismissed it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I just dismissed it right in front of him. You know. yeah. Oh, you yeah. say this, 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 why you're not anybody, are you? Why should we believe you? Only believe you if you're an authority. Yeah. So if you go there, <coughs> see, we have the standards for belief. Someone makes a claim about something. What do you believe? Well, is there an authority in their field? Does that have the requisite background? Do you have the knowledge of that? Mm -hmm. Requisite background. Knowledge. Yeah, if he's not a painter, there's, there's no use to paying attention yeah. to what he calls yeah. physical yeah. symbol. Well, we know what to do next time, don't we? What time is it? 9.20. I'll take 9.20. <laughs> 9.18. Oh, that's right. Mine's two minutes back. Hmm. Make a box and roll. Yeah. I had a, a uh, pardon? Make a, Make a box and throw the parts of the dialogue in yeah. according as they fit. Yeah. Yeah. Little boxes. Filing box. Mm -hmm. Filing box. Right. Huh? Mm -hmm. Are we going to talk about Siddha this Friday? I, I got a call. Uh, they said that the best time would be this Friday because the next week they have some big retreat and there is no way of determining whether they could get us in or special consideration or whatnot. They've got a much tighter program. This Friday is the loosest one. 
So they said, make it this Friday, and uh, if all right, going, we decide to go. All right. and then we meet right after the talk, when everyone starts going up in the lobby. All right, and then Sadananda is going to take us as a group. Right, so Off to the side. Yeah. So in other words, the main talk, everybody sits in on. What time does that start? Starts at 7. The main talk. Yeah. Uh, wait a minute, what, what did I say? Told us to be there at a quarter to 7, I said. That's right. Be there at a quarter to 7, meet in the lobby. Quarter to 7. And uh, it goes for about an hour, um, 20 minutes or so. So just like the other one. Mm -hmm. Just like the other one. If I've answered your question. We're not going to charter a van or a bus. Well, yeah, we can. Can we? we, can, we? Can, we? Can, we? Can, we? can we? I don't know. I'll, I'll be leaving for work. Um, yeah, I mean, money wise. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah, I mean, nobody's decided to pay for it. Uh, yeah. I was thinking, too, we could carpool it. Or carpool it. Yeah. Save your money for a party. After. Where would we want to meet? For carpool. Your house. Yeah, that's close. Cool. Mm -hmm. Right in the middle. Yeah, certainly. Sandy can take one person. <laughs> I remember David uh, put on that list. Yeah, on my car. You're right. I didn't mean to be We have room for a couple people. Yeah. We have room for a couple people. If you know the place, there's that public parking across the street from there from their center. All right, it's a multi-story parking structure. Now, the talk is not in the Siddha Foundation headquarters. They bought out a, a movie house two blocks down. So when you get in, if you walk into the lobby in the main building, you can ask them where the talk is, where the performance is, and they might get somewhere directly from there. A movie house? Meet in the lobby of the movie house? The lobby of the movie house. Oh, okay. Because I don't remember a movie being down there. Yeah. I know there was a Jonathan Club down there, or a big, you know, like... Well, it's one of those, you know, it's one of those streets that they redid, they made modern, put bricks all over the street, no cars. Oh, yeah? And there's a movie house in that street. Oh, but that's on 2nd Street, that's up the hill. Mm-hmm. I don't think it's on a hill. Uh, so, uh, isn't it in well, maybe I've never You're been there. I thought it was on the Coast Highway. Highway. No, it's up the hill. That's the old, from the yeah, Coast that's Highway. That's the old place. Isn't it a couple blocks oh. in? Well, then it's up. Highway? Then if it's a couple blocks in, it has to be up on the hill because that's Second Street. The first street yeah. up at the top of the hill, Second Street, and the 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 one at the bottom is Pacific Coast Highway. There's no first street. So. It, would, it must be like you said, they closed off that downtown section to cars. Yeah. We places. took fifth or sixth. Yeah, near that French little place where we ate, remember? We could meet at our house and go up from there, you know, if you want. Mm -hmm. And uh, have dinner there. Yeah. And come back there afterwards for talk. Alright. Alright. Enjoy. So. Is that the tape recorder or the phone? I like the phone. I know it's the tape oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> was, was, was the last one the tape recorder? No, it was David Beaver. <laughs> <laughs> Is that a new one? <laughs> yeah, yes. Yes. She's got oh, a real oh, connection oh, going on. <laughs> I didn't know it made noise. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So they're not down on the coast highway then, huh? No, they're a couple of blocks from the oh. up on the hill. North. North. And a couple of blocks in. I think it's Broadway, it's the street on So Paul. Broadway runs first. Broadway runs north and south, and that's between Santa Monica and Wilshire, I think. If I remember. I thought we Isn't went it? off at fifth or sixth. East, East and west. Yeah. Right. And that's parallel to Wilshire and Broadway. Santa Monica. And it's between the two, I think, Broadway. So she said that, that uh, 
give it a philosophical twist for us. And about third and fourth is closed off the cars between Wilshire and Santa Monica. So wait, give it a philosophical twist? They're best. Can we get good? Can we get so? Specific street names of names and numbers, you know, for both the places, the main place and the uh, talk Give them a call. Is that available? Give them yeah, call. Give them a call. What's your address, yeah. Carol? Yeah, call the place. Yeah, mm -hmm. What's your address? I'll put it on that. I know how to get there, but I, I don't really understand. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like So therefore, <laughs> don't go by me. Yeah. Get the Thomas brother mail. Well, what I'd do is see, I would probably take the Santa Monica Freeway to Lincoln and get off at Lincoln and go north. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Get off on 4th. We got off 4th. 4th. 4th is the last fourth. exit. That's right. That's the last exit. And you get out, and you, you get out, and you swing right. Yeah. Uh, Isn't Lincoln like about two blocks? Mile. 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 And it's down there two blocks. It's where it across the yeah. way from the multi-story. So right. fourth is the last exit before you go into the tunnel, right? That's correct. I had a talk with uh, Carrie Trishbaum, yeah. whose name is uh, Hagar. Still? Yeah. He's not got one of those. And okay. Taysu now has a book out. Oh. With the hundred year old monk. Uh huh. The two of them together. And it's a work of, it's a translation of Hayon, the hundred year old monk. With some comments by Tessa. It looks very nice. And, uh, hmm. Uh, he got it up. I got a copy. I didn't bring it over tonight. I'll bring it around next time. Yeah. And he may go back in a month. Mm hmm. Story. You know anything more? No, I think Julie typed it. Yeah, Julie did a great deal of the work. Hmm. Yeah. That's no, good. You know, my friends, uh, Corky and his family, they uh, were, were sure. they spent a lot of time with the Koran study with the old man. And one of the last ones that the whole family, the whole family was staying at the Boy, the little boy and little girl. And when he went back to Korea, what was it? Did I tell you the koan? The koan that they were working on was about a duck is oh, grown up in a bottle. In a bottle. How do you get the background? How do you get the <laughs> duck out of the bottle? <laughs> the girl. <laughs> the duck is raised in a bottle. And how do you get the duck out of the bottle without hurting the duck? or breaking the bottle. And the girl got it, passed it. Nobody else in the family has passed it. So she's in this unique position of <laughs> everyone's trying to get her to give him hints. You know. The old man has gone back. She, She's the only one that's been passed on it. <laughs> the old man's gone back to three huh? But uh, So he may come Friday. Oh, that. Hagar, Hag Hagar may come. He may come along on Friday time. for the. Oh, is it? Yeah. Is he there? He and he and Julia yeah, there. Come. At that place. Yeah. Did Tayshu get back yet? Yeah? Yes. Oh, he is. Ah, uh -huh. uh -huh. yeah. good. He get about three. I got new. And he may go be. He may be going back for a month. He get about three. Tayshu may go back. I think we'll be all right. I don't think we'll be all right. Neil Ball. Yeah. 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 Yeah.